and make it stick. Voter up. Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance returned to the campaign trail yesterday and immediately dropped the cordial tone he adopted during Tuesday night's running mate debate. Who could have ever predicted that? At a rally near Detroit, Vance mocked Democratic VP nominee Tim Walls for misspeaking on the debate stage the previous night. It's funny because, you know, we did this debate and then I talked to the president afterwards and we talked a little bit about, you know, what actually happened and, you know, some of the points that I made, some of the points that Governor Walls made. And you know, he, he made this observation. He said that Tim Waltz said that he was friends with school shooters twice. And I said that was probably only the third or fourth dumbest comment Tim Walls made that night. Walls, of course, meant victims of school shootings, but no blow too low. Vance was also asked by a reporter why he refused to say that Trump lost the 2020 election when he was pressed by Walls on that subject during the debate. Here's how Vance justified his response. Here, here's the simple reason. The media is obsessed with talking about the election of four years ago. I'm focused on the election of 33 days from now because I want to throw Kamala Harris out of office and get back to common sense economic policies. But I also think you can believe that America needs to have secure and free elections, but also talk about the fact that just a couple of weeks ago, Democrats in the U.S. Congress blocked a piece of legislation that would have ensured illegal aliens don't vote in our elections. If you believe in American democracy, if you believe in our constitutional republic, you should be trying to strengthen American election integrity and not weaken it. Illegal aliens already don't vote in American elections. Joining us now, author, columnist, and conservative writer, Matt Lewis. So, Matt, you've been thinking and writing about uh, this subject on the VP's uh, af candidates after the debate the other night. It was. It was Tuesday night. It was strikingly cordial. Um, but that was clearly a tactic from Vance to disarm some of Walls' potential attacks. Yesterday, we saw him revert to the real thing. Yeah, look, I think it was sort of a bait and switch. If you were Tim Walls and you were showing up ready to take on J.D. Vance uh, and the, uh, he's going to attack me on my military record or whatever, that J.D. Vance didn't show up. Uh, and so it really was a different J.D. Vance. Uh, and in one sense, you know, I think we maybe want to applaud the civility. It was a little refreshing. But I also think there's some phony phoniness there, you know, where these guys maybe talk tough about the other guy when he's not around, <laughs> um, but in person act nice. Uh, so, you know, maybe a little a little phoniness and inauthenticity there. And I think that may be part of of uh, Vance's M.O. anyway. Yeah, there was certainly a sense among uh, the pundit class that Vance, look, he was smooth. He was, he was, in terms of performance, in terms of style points, he was very good. But the idea that he won the first 88 minutes of the debate, but lost the last two. And that was the moment he was just asked about there, where he refused to say if Trump lost in 2020, the Harris team already turned that into an ad. Do you think that's what's going to resonate in the days and weeks ahead? Well, look, at first I thought it was so uh, funny, right? Vance refuses to answer whether Donald Trump won in 2020, saying he doesn't want to relitigate the past. Then his next, very next thing he said was, and what about <laughs> Kamala Harris in 2020 or is something to that effect? So obviously his boss, Donald Trump, has no problem being obsessed with relitigating the past. Uh, it's not like it's a small thing. Indeed, I think the question of whether Donald Trump or Joe Biden actually won the 2020 election may be one of the defining questions of, of, of our time. Uh, as to whether he gets away with it politically, I think if we were just, if people just watched the debate, he would, right? Because it came very late in the night. A lot of people had turned the channel. I think the real question is whether Kamala Harris's campaign can make people see it uh, by virtue of, of of advertisements and social media. And if and if she can do it, I think it's pretty devastating. Well, in a coincidence, that moment was then followed up the next day by this Jack Smith filing being unsealed, which puts Trump front and center of a 2020 election saying, you know, as we noted earlier in the show, 
unfazed that Mike Pence uh, was in danger during the January 6 riots and the like. So this is, I don't know if it quite qualifies as an October surprise, but it's certainly a moment that Trump's conduct is going to be in the headlines again. Do you think it's going to matter here as we're now just about a month before Election Day? I mean, look, on one hand, I'm tempted to say it's baked into the cake. Uh, people who think it's bad what happened on January 6th uh, are going to continue to think it's bad, and, and Donald Trump supporters are going to continue to rationalize it. I have to tell you just anecdotally, I actually spoke to a friend in West Virginia yesterday uh, who's a Trump supporter and, and asked to me very earnestly, why wasn't Mike Pence? Why isn't he the running mate? And I explained um, they, they wanted to kill Mike Pence. Uh, and so maybe there are some folks out there uh, who uh, that this could impact. Yeah, that's certainly the fundamental question uh, about this campaign. Author, columnist and conservative writer Matt Lewis. Matt, thank you as always. Up next here, we're going to play for you Trump's latest comments about Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, and what he plans.